Okay, now we're back for part two of the uh, church frames. Uh, since the uh, last video, I, mean, I did the uh, profile on the edge, which is the cove. And then, of course, did all the final sanding and staining. And uh, this is a color called Special Walnut. Um, it's in a yellow can. And just went around on the back side and just uh, gave this a quick sanding to clean up any drips. And, of course, uh, cleaned up the rabbit. I got rid of any uh, drips of stain or finish that was in the rabbit here. I'm ready to uh, start setting the uh, artwork in the frames. And I'll show you that in just a minute. I'll show you what the artwork looks like. Here's what the artwork looks like. And the way this is made is uh, the artwork is uh, laminated onto an acrylic sheet. And it's got these um, stained glass lines, uh, like a diamond pattern throughout it. And each one is a different theme. And uh, for right now, this is only six of the ten. He's going to be doing four more at a later date. Uh, these six are going into an exhibition in February. So I've got to get these in the frames. And uh, ready for this uh, exhibition in February. Okay, we're getting these uh, set in the frames here. Uh, the most uh, critical thing is to have these uh, grout lines uh, straight with the frame. On some of the artwork, the uh, grout lines are obscured by the artwork. So it's not so critical along the side, but up here on the top, I'm trying to get the uh, grout line to match the arch as close as I can. So it's kind of right on the edge of the uh, grout line. So what I'm going to do is just uh, use some small pine blocks. They're uh, just a little over an eighth inch thick so that they're flush with the frame and just a little dab of uh, hot melt glue. And what I'm doing first is put uh, just four in each corner, just one in each corner. And uh, be careful not to uh, lock the artwork in place. Then I can slide the artwork underneath the uh, blocks and get it centered up. And then I can lock the artwork in place. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over and make sure it's looking straight. I can slide it a little bit underneath those blocks. That looks good right there. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, glue and just uh, squirt a little bit in the uh, crack here. Making a little bit of a bumper. And then once that sets up, that'll hold the uh, artwork in place. Make sure it looks straight going down the sides. And uh, after all the blocks are in place, I'm just going around and putting a few little beads along the uh, entire length. And then once the glue is hardened up, I just take a chisel and uh, shave off the excess glue and just shave the pine block down flush with the frame. Okay, now that we've got everything uh, in place, I'm just going to make sure there's no debris. And now the next thing is to put a paper backing on it, uh, some craft paper. I'm trying a new method I never tried before. I saw this on YouTube. I've tried different uh, methods in the past and I'm trying that this time. It seems to be working really well. Uh, using some double stick tape, I mean carpet tape, and uh, putting a strip of carpet tape all the way around and then uh, sticking it to a piece of paper. So this is a roll of carpet tape. Uh, I've cut it in half. Uh, the roll is too wide for the edge here. The uh, demonstrations I saw on YouTube, they were using a special framers tape. 
It's probably available at a framing supply. Uh, this was readily available at the hardware store. I didn't have to go hunting around for a special tape. This is basically the same thing and it works just as well. Now on the top here I'm going to use a full width piece because it's curved so I can cover that whole area and then just trim off to match the curve. Okay, now I've taken my craft paper and laid it on a nice uh, flat table. Uh, I've got a uh, large folding table here I have that I've set up. works great for this. And I've taped the paper to the table. I'm trying to stretch it out a little bit until it's nice and flat. And I'm going to take the uh, frame and drop it right on the uh, paper. And then press it down into the paper. Just very carefully lift it up. Okay, now back over to the other bench. I'm going to press the paper, get it uh, well adhered to the tape, and kind of rub the edges over. And using a J roller, press it down a little bit more, give it a little more pressure. And then take a razor blade and feel for the edge of the frame and keep the blade about a 45 degree angle and just run it right along the edge. One of the demonstrations I saw, they lightly wetted the paper, uh, causes it to uh, shrink and stretch. Um, everything worked out really great. The only issue I ran into um, with the uh, adhesive tape has got a little bit of tape on the side here. A little tape rolled over on the uh, curve here. So I'm just taking a little bit of naphtha and just uh, can lightly rub that off. It's softening up the glue and a little bit of scraping with the razor blade. The uh, final step is to put some uh, hooks on and these are a D-ring hanger. And what I did is I uh, made a template to uh, locate the holes. Uh, this is the uh, template I used back when I was making the uh, frames and on the uh, first frame I uh, determined the location and uh, just drew a small pilot hole then I'm lining the template up with the bottom here and then just marking the hole on each side here Now for right now I'm just putting one screw in. Uh, I'm going to leave it with one screw. Uh, the final method of uh, hanging them has not been determined. These may be adjusted in or up like this. So when they make the final determination, um, uh, we can add an extra screw here to lock them in the position. That concludes part two of the church frames. They're all ready for the exhibition coming up in February. And they're going to be installed in the church this spring, I believe in May. 
I'll do another video at that time showing what they look like hanging in the church.